Hey everybody, it's Crystal and I just wanted to really quickly remind you that the 2020 Channeling Intensive starts on October 11th, 2020 and if you haven't checked out the program, do go to the link below in the description because it's going to be awesome and I hope to see you there. Okay, on to today's video. Beautiful. All right, we have a question from Shanna. Shanna says, I lost my dog, Zena, this week. Any tips on how I can connect with her? And before I lob this over to you, because you're the one to answer this question, because Shanna, I don't know if you know, but Trisha is an animal communicator and she also teaches animal communication. She is an expert, so you're in the right place. But I do want you to know that <clears throat> I have some kind of unconventional ideas about. Uh, our pets, these, uh, they're not my ideas. They were channeled many years ago, but many years ago, spirit, way before all the, all the uh, dog reincarnation films, by the way, there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> but a long time ago, um, spirit showed me that our animals are literally a part of our soul complex. And so when you think of yourself as your higher self or your I am over soul complex, like the most pure, raw, divine God like you that you are, there are many energetic things happening, many aspects. It is a complex of energy, if you will. And part of that complex or one of those aspects or some of those aspects take the form of these pets. These pets are literally you. And that's why we feel so deeply connected to them because they are expressions of our own soul that we are experiencing in our life. And we dispatch these aspects of our own soul into specific incarnations so as to learn and predominantly so as to learn more about love and what it feels like to experience and also receive unconditional love. And, and I dare say that we can get that from people, but it's much more difficult. But boy, can you get it from a dog. And boy, can you get it from a cat and a bird and a pet. They demonstrate unconditional love to me in a higher form and way than just about anything else on this planet. And so we come with these expressions of our own soul, which is already acquainted and embodied in unconditional love because we come from unconditional love, that being our creator. And then we just animate. It's like we dance into these different lives. And here I am dancing as Crystal Ann Compton. And I've built so many things into this incarnation and so many experiences and people. And I'm so grateful. But one of the things that I've, I've built into this experience is Koa, my Great Dane, and Sunshine, my Great Dane, and Ku, my Great Dane, and Ginny before them, and the cats that I've had, and all these animals that have taught me such important lessons. And I'll tell you, I came up in a family where my dad did not know how to treat animals and would in fact be sometimes abusive toward animals. And that was modeled to me. And that taught me something too. And those aspects, those animals that came for my father and also came for me so I can witness that taught me so very much through the mistreatment that happened in their lives. And they come for so many reasons. And I'm saying this to you so that you know how close Zena actually is. Zena hasn't gone anywhere outside of you. Zena hasn't gone to another astral plane that is far away from you. Zena still, still exists within the soul complex of you, therefore making it so easy for you to communicate with her. And when we talk about portals in the various programs that we do, we talk about the portals that we can access that are innate within us that allow us to access certain beings and certain entities. And some of those beings are our pets and our animals. And one of the easiest ways to connect with and commune with and still have that relationship with your animal is to go through the portal of your heart. I'm here to tell you there is an energetic portal that exists in the heart and it is like a wormhole. It is like a pathway. And it allows you direct access to your loved ones, to your angels, and also to your pets. And so the thing you want to do here, listen up, is drop down into the heart. Get into the space of the heart. And many people think, well, I feel love, so I must be in my heart. But you're still in your head most of the time when you're thinking this way. To get into your heart requires you to really feel and embody love. And you can do this by thinking about Xena. Drop into your heart and just think about your love for Xena. And you might feel some tears coming up. That's heart activation. That means the portal's opening. 
maybe spend about 180 seconds or three minutes there in that beautiful love for Zena and allow the emotions to well up. The portal opens and there she is. And you can say anything. You can ask any question and she will answer. You can just share your love and she will receive it. You can trust it because it's true. Now, you may not necessarily see anything with your eyeballs or hear anything with your ears, but trust that that's all you have to do. The connection of love is timeless and infinite. And so by using this technique, you can always talk with her. And so I just wanted to share my uh, this information with you about our pets and how close they truly are with us and how you can communicate with them. But now let me give this to you, Trisha, because I know you have so many more beautiful things to uh, say. Not much more. Uh, you know, <laughs> how wonderful it feels to be with our animals. And, you know, we, we this is, as you're saying, you know, they are, they are our body. They are an extension of us. They are our soul animated as well and so like you know when I look at Franzi my kitty and he's just like you know so beautiful and so you know and he, he meows his sweet little and he flirts and and it just in holding and I did just feel so good and it's like we feel like oh Franzi or Zena is so beautiful, so sweet, so unconditional. But you know what they're saying? They're saying, this is you. This is your beauty. I'm just showing it to you. I just came in this first suit to show it to you. And it's really that law of resonance, animated, manifested, embodied. And yet, of course, they are, they have their own soul input and their own identity, of course. But the energy is, is one. And so when there is the transition, because the relationship started with the physical identity of we two are now coming together and their bodies are so beautiful and everything, their voices and their, their touch and their, you know, everything that they are, all of their behaviors and all of the subtle and, and articulate ways that they showed love are real and we associate that with the physical body and the physical there we love that physical body so much and when it is their time to disconnect that soul energy from the physical form and to discontinue creating the physical body and it gets returned to beautiful mother Gaia then we have a real sense of loss and pain because the relationship is no longer being benchmarked with that physical body and so we do that's the process of grief and shifting it but the fact is like crystal said they've gone nowhere they're in your heart as you feel the love of inside your heart that's where the relationship always was in all of its forms that was the true relationship we just had it associated with the physical body also and again, loving the physical body is a part of this wonderful relationship, but it has the, the truth, the higher truth of the relationship has gone nowhere. So the, the articulation of the love and, and how beautiful is it that when they pass, they turn us to ourselves again and even more. They, they, they discontinue taking any credit as a separate being and they say, go here. This is where we are. This is where we are together. And so as Crystal was saying, you know, as you just feel the love that you have with Zena, feel it, see her face, whatever it is in your mind's eye, look at a picture, whatever it is. And then anything you ask or anything that you allow to bubble up in, in as Crystal said, you may not see it with your own eyes. Sometimes people think that animal communication or communicating with spirit, somehow there is like a, totally different voice and you might it's supposed to hear it outside your head or it's something that is seems really different but you know what your animals are you so it is you it's your own voice it's your own literary language but when you feel the love the communication that follows is your communication with Xena and then yes when we move a little past the process the reorganization of how we associate our relationship, our love, that 
it's a little bit more grounded into the heart portal, into the heart oracle. And down the line, you know, you may have dreams that are visitations. And when some animal that I love passes, all of my past animals show up in my meditation, like some kind of menagerie, just like boom, 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 in in a way that is like really demonstrative, that it isn't necessarily in other times. And so the holograph sort of starts to show up in a more demonstrative way when it's helpful and appropriate at that time. But for now, the removal of the physical relationship is turning you into your own energy to find, to remember, to dwell in the existence of that love that you have with her. And so thank you so much for creating that love with Zena because we all benefit by it. Trisha, can you speak a little bit to the experience of transition on the part of the animal? Because you, it's, go ahead. Yeah. Well, what were you going to say? Because it's what? Well, it, it's, it's very effortless, isn't it? Is they're, they're just one moment they're here and the next moment they're yeah. there and it's. Yeah. So animals, um, the, the only time that there's resistance to death for animals is if it's like sort of like, I mean, I've, I've connected with wild animals that didn't know that they were going to get hit by a car. And so they're kind of activated in the, from the physical experience of it still for just those brief moments. And then with uh, domesticated or animals who are our family, then it's because, you know, they are wanting the work to be done with the human. And if the, if there's some kind of like um, neurosis between the human and the animal, then that can be um, a confusion as to, you know, because the, maybe the animal themselves are highly empathic. And so they're, we, all animals are empathic, but you know what I mean? Like almost, because animals are not perfect. They can have neurosis and they can have flaws. So, you know, those are the different ways, but moreover, that's really rare, honestly, because when it comes to death and dying, it's just a normal and natural process. And they understand that they're actually going to be experiencing a different kind of freedom, you know, a different kind of mobility and fluidity. And so there's no loss. So they really do their energy just naturally understands that. And so they easily just move on with, um, with my, um, I had two cats who passed this year and they were feral. They lived outside and, um, the, uh, the most ridiculous love story you've ever seen. Have you ever seen a, a, a crazier love story than Tom and Helen? <laughs> and so Helen passed and Tom passed six months later. But when Helen was passing and she was obsessed with Tom, like obsessed with him, could not be separated from him. Yeah, because you saw them. <laughs> She was ridiculous. It was like, it was a little gross. Like she was like obsessed with Tom and he was always so sweet and gentle, even so much that like she would be like, mom, I love you. 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 And he would just sometimes go, shh. Like he would just put his paw up on her. He wouldn't hit her or get frustrated. He would just like, stop wife, please wife. <laughs> and rarely anyway. So when Helen was in the hospital and I was talking to her about what the options were because she had a kidney, kidneys that were, one had to be removed and then the other one was failing. And she was like, just get me home. Just take me home to Tom. And I was like, honey, you can't be put outside with Tom. And she was like, oh, okay, well, that will be too painful. Like she didn't understand because she knows human medicine does crazy things that she doesn't know. It's like technology that I don't get. So if I'm alive right now, just put me alive outside with my husband. And I was like, no, that's not an option. And then she's like, oh, okay, well, anything else alive is, is too painful. So then let me go. And so we assisted her. I mean, she would have passed without our assistance, you know. And then she was instantly like, boom, right there with Tom right there with him so that was just like okay whatever's fastest way to get me to tom that's fine um but there's no nothing that keeps me from him anymore um, but of course the physical separation the physical association tom didn't want to live without that he tried it for six months but he was lonely for the physical and so then he made his transition and generally speaking so they they don't they understand there's just a different way that they'll be experiencing us and yes, sometimes animals that are deeply bonded like that will 
what my family used to say, grieve themselves to death because they're just like, okay, well, I, I want to have the physical relationship also. So let's just go be together. So there's no illusion. There's no separation. There's no other way that my energy is being used that keeps me from, you know, my bonded one. Um, in the transition on the metaphysical side, animals, they like, so humans, we, we move, we're in that 4D, just that astral and then we move on, you know, we go into the light and we transition to higher uh, dimensions. Animals do that too, but what they first do is they go down into this portal into the earth for a reset to cleanse their energy of the interactions with the illusion, predominantly what the humans created, and then they continue the same path. So they just kind of reset their energy and then move up and on. So whereas a human might pass and then get into 4D, which is the first dimension that we encounter, which reflects back to us uh, according to sort of the condition in which we lived our life, and some of us can get stuck as a result. Like some of us, you know, might uh, be ignorant in certain ways, or we might be angry in certain ways, and and so we encounter 4D and we can get lost there. Um, and this is how we get ghosts and this is how we get earthbound spirits. But with animals, that really never happens because they go down for that reset, as you say, and then boom, they go back into, I don't know, 5D. It's like, so we think about, we always think of up and down because that's just, you know, how we're oriented. Uh, so we kind of like are in 4D. They are, they are depending on their species and their you know domesticity or whatever they are on the upper end of 2d so they actually go to 2d and then they continue up the frequencies up the densities the same way but they don't they don't get stuck they can they can hang out there they can be like this is cool i'm gonna chill here for a bit they could yeah they could chill in 4d if they wanted to no no they don't have the confusion like humans get lost because they have because you don't change You don't grow just because you disconnect your mental and emotional. All of your learning and orientation is the same This while you're in 4D. Because it's really in another way to look at it. It's the mental emotional space. So your mental and emotional body is there without a physical body. And so if you have beliefs of going to hell and whatever, animals don't have those beliefs. That, that That doesn't make any sense. Like that's not how things work. So the only thing they do is they they first go to 2D because that's their orientation anyway, and it resets their energy, cleanses it a bit, and then they continue up the frequencies. That's so cool. And <clears throat> they know how to travel those portals and can very frequently come back and visit you. So just as our departed loved ones can come back and visit us, and a lot of us have visitation dreams, as Trisha said, and a lot of us also have actual apparition visitations from people who have passed, your animals can come bounding through your house again. My husband lost his very beloved um, dog, Biscuit, the year that we met. And every now and again, I see her kind of around him or just kind of walking through the house or out of the corner of my eye. And he does as well. Or, you know, we'll hear like the little tinkle tink of the, of the, of the tags and stuff. So they still visit us. We didn't mean to spend so long on this question, but it's just such a cool subject. And we, for the most part, most of us have or love animals and um, most of us have, have also lost animals. And so this is something that's near and dear to our heart. Thank you. Thank you. Shanna's uh, comment, she says that uh, Zena passed from a massive seizure and she was here to help her from a traumatic childhood. I just forgave my dad for not raising me and hold norm- no more density there. Like her job was, like her job here is finished and she was only four years old. Oh, she had a hot she came in hot and did some work. That did some work, and they do. They do work. Like <clears throat> by by um, their presence, they help us to and actually do physically transmute the energy that we're working through. Because again, they are us, and they share the energy of us. And so, by my being with Koa, for example, and just. Uh, basking in the love of Koa, I'm able to actually jostle patterns and issues and past traumas. They come loose within the system of who it is that I am, bubble to the surface, and I can release them just by being 
with my animals. They're they're like little uh, machines in this way. They can help us do this work, and they've come to they've come to do that. Many of them have come to do that. So you're you're right about Zena being here for you. And and I will say that this current trend of you know animals reincarnating and coming back to us, I hundred percent believe this, and I've experienced this within my own packs of animals. <clears throat> um, they don't always come back as the same kind of animal, meaning a dog might come back as a bird or a bird might come back as a cat, but many times they'll come back dog to dog, bird to bird. Um, but I've had, uh, for example, my middle Dane, Koo, um, he's my black Dane. He definitely resembles in spirit and energy a dog that I rescued in Chicago named Noah, like to the T. Even when my brother, who's an evangelical Christian, doesn't believe in any of this stuff, he comes over and he's like, that's Noah. That is Noah because he does everything that Noah does. And there's many, um, there's many aspects, characteristics, and um, uh, in sh in sunshine that biscuit used to have. Now, I actually asked an animal communicator, "Is this biscuit?" <laughs> she's like, "No," but she's got in her recombobulation coming back into your this incarnation to be with y'all. Like she's picked up aspects of biscuit. Yeah, it's like right, and because it, it's not so linear necessarily like it's exactly all the same energy that's animating this new personality and the personalities are always going to be different but it is like what they tell me sometimes is like I've sent aspects of myself so there might be let's say that Ku is bringing through I don't know 75 percent of of Noah maybe I don't know I'm just arbitrarily just to help us to focus on it but maybe Biscuit is sending 15 percent to Sunshine you know of the energy and so that's that's kind of what it is now like yeah with with my animals right now I have a, a bird named Raphael and Brian can't stop calling him Francis who's a bird who passed last year <laughs> and they're both English budgies they're both a similar kind of bird so yeah, with, so far as them being the same kind of animal or same species, you often will see repetition of the, either the same species or something like that simply because they're sort of perfecting. It's like having a major in college, and so you have a focus. You have something that you're working on, you know, um, but not necessarily. Sometimes, like, there's this one um, animal communication session that I recall because I don't remember my sessions, but I recall this one because I actually blogged about it. And it was this little Boston Terrier. He, so, you know, those are <laughs> cute little guys. And the life that he brought through where he had been with his human was like as a wolf. And so it was kind of cool because he was like, and now I'm like so small and I'm indoors and it's like I can go anywhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he was like trying something a little different, but still in the canine arena. Mm -hmm. So let that hearten you, um, you know, because I... I they, they often return and um, you can feel that if your heart is open, you can feel that similar signature and you can recognize them when they do return. Um, but thank you for that question very much. And we send love to you and also to Zena.